Honestly, my teenage self used to talk about and make art about love. I started thinking about this yesterday at Trivia because the song Habits came on. And when I was like 16 years old, I choreographed a dance to Habits and it was called Insomnia. And my competition team and I competed it a bunch for like an entire year. And it was all about like having a crush all of like the the racing thoughts and the what if I had done this differently? What if I had said this differently? What if I was just different? Would this be different? So I don't know. I've just been thinking about my teenage self and how much I admire her for being able to earnestly create about everything that I was feeling at that age. As embarrassing as maybe it should have been, I don't, I, I don't know. I never felt embarrassed about any of it. It just felt like, well, of course this is what I do. I'm feeling so much, I have to show people. I have to do this, I have to make this. And I think that's a sentiment that I've very much carried into my adulthood, but I've thought about it as an adult as well with you know, sharing my poetry and not wanting to anymore and being like, why don't you? Why don't you want to share your poetry anymore? And I'm like, God, it just feels so exposing. So much of creating feels so exposing. And it's beautiful. And it's what makes creating so much fun. But God, is it scary, you know? And I, I kind of admire how little fear my 16-year-old self had making whole choreographed routines that I would explain the storyline to to everyone on the team then we do it on stage and it was all over this like random guy that I really didn't even like that much but I was so inspired by every little small feeling and I let myself lean into it I gave myself permission to take myself seriously and I just love that and I want I want to be more like that now <laughs> I want to resurrect those parts of my 16 year old self I knew it was love. Boys they dime a dozen. Boys they ain't doing nothing for me any longer. Might be getting stronger. There's this couple that keeps appearing on my social media feeds that has challenged themselves to fuck every single day for a month. So I have been organizing my nightstand and prioritizing my vibrators in a ranking to cope. <laughs> That's not a joke either. So let me let you in on a secret since this video is sponsored by Balesa, which is my favorite place to buy all of my sex toys. It's where every single sex toy inside this drawer that is currently beneath this camera, they're all from Balesa, okay? This vibrator deserves Academy Awards, okay? This is so funny to me. <laughs> this is probably my favorite and most used vibrator. It is the Aurora Soft Touch. Very classic looking vibrator. Gets the job done. This one's a little different because the Soft Touch line just makes this exterior part so much softer and more moldable, much more realistic. Another vibrator that I'm keeping in the top drawer of my nightstand these days is of course, the air vibe this one is a dual stimulation vibrator so you've got click stimulation on one side g-spot stimulation on the other and of course it bends to fit your body and then keeping with these beautiful little charging cases we've got the demi wand this is another classic wand vibrator most nights i'm really only interested in a little bit of click stimulation before i go to bed so a little wand toy like this is 
perfect also so good for travel who's gonna think this is what it is not that i'm hiding it from anyone Pfft, who do i care who do I care about not seeing this? So if you're looking to pick up a new vibrator, buy some more lube, any other sex accessories, Blessa is the perfect place to pick up anything and everything related to sexual health. And lucky for you, this video is in fact a giveaway. And it's a giveaway where everybody wins something. All you have to do is input your email address at the link in the description down below, check your inbox in a few minutes and see what you want. You will either win a free vibrator or a gift card towards your next purchase at Blessa. My phone just vibrated in my pocket, but I was like, for a second thought that it was one of these vibrators come to life. So be sure to go input your email address and go get yourself a free vibrator or some free money towards your purchase of a new vibrator, which everyone deserves this time of year, mama. Whether you're buying it for yourself or you're buying it for someone you love, great investment, highly recommended to each and every last one of you. It has increased my happiness exponentially. <laughs> Can I just say that walking up to Bake Shop and seeing a sign on the door that said they were included in an article about the best bagels in New York City, I can't help but feel that I am partially responsible for that. And maybe I'm taking credit where credit isn't due, but I feel like maybe I'm due a little bit of fucking credit. Credited in the article. This bitch has been talking about this bagel shop for three fucking years. <laughs> and y'all didn't believe her. But now, people out there are writing about how it's one of the best bagels in New York. And I have to say, I agree. <laughs> Don't go to Bake Shop thinking you're gonna get like a classic New York bagel though, because it's really not. It's much smaller and lighter, but they're so fresh because they're baked right fucking there every morning. And they're so good, they're so fucking good. The article described them as like feeling like they were flown in from Eastern Europe like 50 years ago or something, which is kind of wild, but I don't disagree. <laughs> My friend Robbie is hosting a show later this week called Love is Embarrassing a la Olivia Rodrigo, which this video should be coming out the day before the show, but unfortunately tickets are sold out. So it sucks for all of you that won't be able to attend this wonderful show the day before Valentine's Day. But I've truly spent much of this week thinking about how having a crush really is so truly and utterly embarrassing. <laughs> it's so humiliating. And you know, tis the season. It's February, month of lovers, which I do love. I love a good lover season, okay? I'm here, I'm living for it. Living, laughing, loving, CEO of Lover Girls Worldwide, the president, the inventor, okay, she's here and she's loving it. However, having a crush really is so deeply embarrassing. <laughs> like it's so embarrassing in a good way. Like it hurts so good sort of thing. It, it's embarrassing so good, if, sort of. <laughs> and the fact that having a crush and being vulnerable with how you feel telling someone else that you like them can feel so embarrassing sometimes the fact that that is true only makes it that much more courageous to continue choosing to have crushes to let yourself get giddy and excited even when there is the risk of things not working out or not being rewarded for that vulnerability i think my point here is maybe just acknowledging that it makes me feel good to um lean into enjoying the embarrassing part of having a crush of thinking someone else is the coolest person you've ever met and wanting to be around them and so you know having a crush and being like a giddy 16 year old is both the sweetest thing ever a feeling that i love deeply and dearly uh and also it is <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> like, it's so beautiful to be that vulnerable. But it's also, like, it does make me want to ram my head into the wall sometimes. Life is all about balance, you guys. <laughs> So on my podcast this week, I proposed an idea for a collaborative 
little art project that we could do together. And so now I'm working on bringing it together. The idea was to make a collaborative playlist for the residents of Lover Girls Worldwide. A playlist for Lover Girls made by Lover Girls across the globe. So I asked everyone to let me know what song sounds like falling in love. To them and then I'm going through and I'm adding a lot of these suggestions to the playlist I'm not adding all of them because some of them I disagree with <laughs> curated by lover girls across the globe vetted by Maddie Drosbeck CEO of lover girls worldwide personally <laughs> some people are too pessimistic about love for me <laughs> like I saw a few 100% breakup songs being submitted and I was like this is not a song that sounds like falling in love babe this is a song that sounds like your heart is being broken into a million billion tiny little pieces this is not what I asked for <laughs> now that's not to say that I don't love a nuanced love song a love song that isn't just like lovey-dovey and all good things I definitely added some more like complicated love songs in here because I love a complicated love song I love a love song that acknowledges the like difficulties and complications of falling in love with someone and how it's not always like oh well we love each other and now we're together and we're so happy and everything's perfect. Like that's barely ever the truth, right? So I love a complicated love song, but a song that's just like, I hate this man. I'm not adding that. <laughs> but I'll tell you the ones that I personally added. These were my contributions to the Lover Girls Worldwide playlist. Number one, my first gut answer to the question, what song sounds like falling in love to you? First of all, that. <laughs> Just Like Heaven by The Cure. That, that song to me is the soundtrack to falling in love. When I am developing feeling for someone, understand that that is a song that plays in the background when I'm reliving all of my favorite memories with the person I have a crush on. Absolutely fucking lootly it is. Next one that I added was Cowboy Gangster Politician by Goldie Boutillier, which has been at the top of my on repeat playlist for the last three months because I relate. <laughs> that is a complicated love song to me. I added Melt With You by Modern English, obviously. Turn by The Wombats, oh! Matthew Murphy is so good at writing love songs, it is painful to me personally. Turn by The Wombats. If somebody wrote that about me, I'll pass away. <laughs> Archie Marry Me by Always. She For Liz by Parachute, banger. Can't Take My Eyes Off You by Frankie Valli, he haunts me, but I do love that fucking song. <laughs> I Feel It by Avid Dancer, Kiss Me, Sixpence on the Richer, Baby by Cannons, period, ooh. And you know, I supplemented with some other ones that I liked, but those were my main contributions. Now I'm working on adding in all of the songs that you guys submitted for this. So by the time this video goes live, the playlist probably won't be done completely, but I'll add the link in the description down below in case you wanna listen as I'm adding things to it. I think I've done a pretty good job this year of not anticipating heartbreak. I, I think uh, in the past I've been very inclined to panic about things before they're happening. I have been known to have a gut feeling and convince myself weeks, months in advance that something is going to end badly or someone's going to hurt me. And then if that fear turns out to be true, it's like I use it as proof to validate this weird feeling that I had. And then from that point forward, it's like this weird feeling dictates my life. And unfortunately I have anxiety, so I have a lot of weird feelings. <laughs> so it's hard having like a worry like that that's validated and then you feel like every time you have a worry from then on it's like oh well i know that i'm gonna get my feelings hurt and then this is gonna suck and you spend so much time that you could be enjoying someone's presence getting to know someone the process of falling in love with this fear of well what if it all goes bad and i think that this year was the first year where i've been able to like be more in the present, just letting things be 
whatever they are in the moment and not really thinking too much about what comes next. I think it's been good for me to live more in the present. So I, I don't know, I feel like as I've been moving away from having a more anxious attachment style where I'm constantly panicking about what happens next and what every little thing means to now being more in a secure place where I'm able to live in the moment with my connections and sort of take things as they go and work through things together with the person that I'm interested in to be open and vulnerable extremely more than I ever have been in the past, which is also crazy. I was thinking this week about how like I I have so impressed myself this year. Just taking a moment to be nice to myself. I feel like I have shown up for myself and my feelings and the people that I like so honestly and have like really put myself out there in a way that I don't know that I ever have in the past. And that is something that I want to be proud of. Being a lover girl, choosing to love uh, as protest of all the people and experiences and moments in life that have made me feel like it would be easier to be quiet and aloof and cold and not talk about my feelings. To, to choose to be a lover girl despite all of it, that is as much for me as it is for the people that I am loving. It feels like honoring myself to show up and do the scary thing and say what I'm feeling and put myself out there and allow myself to sit in this middle space of like, oh, I could, I could really be hurt right now. I am exposing such a huge part of my heart and I am not in control of what other people do with it. And that's terrifying, but it's also so brave and it makes me feel so in alignment with myself. And I think that I just felt like I would take the possibility of disappointment, the possibility of things not going exactly the way I want them to over not doing it at all in self-preservation any day of the fucking week. And you know what? Things are usually pretty complicated. It's so rare that you have a love story where everything is smooth sailing the whole fucking time. I'm like, maybe I could have experienced that when I was younger, but then in other ways, I'm like, when I was 18, 19 and had never been hurt before and had no baggage whatsoever, was I really like emotionally mature enough to have an in-depth relationship in the way that I want now? Like, I don't think so. But I don't really know that that would have mattered much because we're so young and like, what the fuck do we know? And now it's like, with everything that's worth something, there is challenges to work through and there are insecurities that pop up and it, it's not that we want to wish away the hard parts of loving people it's that you want to find the right person to work through those things with and i think accepting that there's always going to be some kind of challenges to overcome insecurities to work through like discomfort to navigate through with someone i think accepting that has made it easier for me to sit in the middle space and to not jump ahead and be anxious about everything that could go wrong. Because it's not even that I'm trying to avoid things going wrong. It's that I just hope that I'm with someone that can navigate those things with me, that wants to sit in those feelings with me. I'm not looking for something that's perfect. I'm just looking for someone who cares. I've been thinking about that a lot because I do feel like it's been a a big shift in me moving away from a more anxious attachment style to now feeling like I am more secure, way more secure than I once was and like what a relief that is. I'm not worried about when challenges pop up. I trust myself to be able to show up openly and vulnerably and work through it. And I, if I really like someone, I guess I trust them to do that too.
world's most popular musicians ever feel like existential dread at the amount of information they've shared through their music? I think about this all the time and I wish that I knew the answer because I would feel really comforted if the answer was yes. <laughs> because music is obviously so universally enjoyed. Almost all of us are listening to at least a little bit of music every single day. I feel like people don't often stop and realize like how vulnerable the lyrics they're listening to are. Music and poetry, kind of the same fucking thing. But I feel like maybe people perceive one as being way more intimate and vulnerable than the other. Like if you ask someone if they like poetry, a lot of people are like, no, that's too much. But then if you ask people if they like music, they're like, yeah, of course I like music. Who doesn't like music? You, that's an insane question. But like poetry and music are kind of the same thing except we perceive one as being a little bit mushy, gushy, gooey, overly sentimental, but then music we don't for whatever reason. So then I wonder if people just never think about how vulnerable these artists are being and in some way it acts as a shield. And so the artists can just like put out art and be like, well, it's art. And it actually maybe wasn't vulnerable and I made it all up and it's all fake. <laughs> Like, of course it's very intimate and vulnerable and people share vulnerable things through art because it is a way of expression. But I sometimes feel like because it's art, people don't often recognize like what a feat it is, you know? Do these big, huge musicians ever stop and feel like, oh my God, I've said so much. I don't know, is this all just going back to the whole like, you are thinking about yourself more than anybody else is thinking about yourself? kind of thing maybe that's what's we're looping back around to here we all just overanalyze ourselves and what we're saying and how much we're exposing about ourselves and we feel so much dread about it when really other people are not analyzing us in the way we're analyzing ourselves it's like when you go hang out with people and the next morning you wake up and you're like oh my god i talked way too fucking much what did i say i must have been so embarrassing like i just uh usually other people don't even think twice about it. <laughs> All of that to say, I feel like I've just been so inspired by uh, the courage it takes to, to release anything, but really the courage it takes to make art about love specifically. And I, I feel in awe of versions of myself that seemed to do it without thinking twice about it. And I am in awe of the people that I watch do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Like it, it seems so effortless to watch them do it, but I know that it actually takes quite a bit. I'm feeling so much right now and it's fun learning new ways to share that and make art about love without feeling like I am saying too much or exposing too much of myself because my privacy is also important to me. I don't know, it's a weird balance. Artists out there, how do you balance being so vulnerable and open in your work and also keeping parts of yourself for you? Where's the line between being open and vulnerable and being pulled to create art about the things that are most important to you and in your life presently and keeping things to yourself and being private and not having to make art about every feeling you feel, even if every feeling you feel feels so profound. I don't know, does anyone know where the line is? Someone please tell me where the fucking line is. <laughs>